Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today I got a very exciting review for you. These are the rest of the Battle Zords from the Power Rangers movie. I have done a review of the T-Rex Battle Zord right here. Really cool. And now we finally have the Pterodactyl, Mastodon, Sabertooth Tiger, and Triceratops. We have the other four Zords in the lineup. I thought, you know, I could release reviews of them individually, blah, blah, blah. I know you guys just want to see it, right? I'm just going to get this all done in one massive video review. We're going to take a look at each of them one by one, and then I will combine them to form the Megazord. And this thing apparently is insanely big, so I'm excited about that. So. First things first, I want to show you the boxes up close, the packaging, just to show you what it's like. So the T-Rex sword, by the way, is roughly $35, I think it was, at Toys R Us. The price may change over time, but as of me purchasing it, I believe it was $35. These are each $20. So in total, you're looking at, you know, $80 for these four, plus... 35, so if my math is correct, well, basically over $100 for the entire Megazord, which is very expensive considering they're usually, what, 30, 35, $40 or something maybe for a Megazord. So this is quite different than your traditional Megazord. So let's take a look at the packaging here. You have open style packaging. So uh, all the movie stuff, a lot of it uses like the, the morpher in the background as the packaging. You have your movie logo, Pterodactyl Battle Zord with Pink Ranger, although all the packaging only shows the Red Ranger there. But here's the Pterodactyl Zord right here. Pretty cool. And they all, all the Zords come with a mini little figure of the Ranger itself. So there's the Pink Ranger, which we'll take a look at. And, uh, but the Pink Ranger Zord in particular also comes with a putty. So that's interesting. It says capture the putty villain. So, uh, pretty cool that we have a putty. Uh, the back of the box then, of course, shows you more details about the Zord right there, as you can see. Uh, capture the putty villain, and so each of the rangers can also sit inside the Zords in their Zord cockpit. And then as the bottom shows, you can take the five Zords and combine them to form the Megazord, which we will take a look at. So, that's the Pterodactyl. Now we have Triceratops right here. Uh, again, open style packaging, as you can see, does come with the Blue Ranger. And also comes with some missiles, fires missiles. So that's the uh, the gimmick for the Triceratops Battle Sword. Back of the box again shows you uh, that functionality as well, firing missiles, and it's got the Ranger cockpit. So, pretty cool. Alright, all the way over here, we have the Mastodon Battle Sword. Uh, so here it is. Um, this one has a launching catapult. That's the, the gimmick for, uh, for this sword in particular. Uh, it comes with a mini little black ranger. And then the back of the box shows you that as well. Um, yes, I do see that the Mastodon has eight legs. No, I have no idea why. I, I really am confused as to the design choices that the, uh, that the movie team made with some of these. Uh, I think it still looks kind of neat, but it's really odd. Yes, I agree. Um, all right, then last but not least, we have the Sabretooth Battle Zord. Oh, so they're just calling it the Sabretooth, not Sabretooth Tiger. Although, I'm pretty sure they've called it the Sabretooth Tiger and other stuff. So, anyways, here it is right here. Unfortunately, the one that I got, the only one they had was the little tie broke off, but whatever. I still got, you know, everything included. Does come with the Yellow Ranger, which we'll take a look at. And this one comes with twin cannons as well. So that's the, the gimmick for this sword. So, anyways, enough talking. Without further ado, let's just get these things open and take a look. All right, I have all five of the Battle Zords out of the package all together. It's really hard to fit this all in the camera frame, so it's kind of scrunched up together. But still, it's pretty epic just seeing the sheer size of all of these Zords all together. You know, I'm gonna talk about the quality and, and what I think about each of them individually, but the sheer size of these Zords all together is pretty impressive. Whether you like the designs or not, the size is pretty impressive, definitely. So, I wanna take a look at each of the Zords one by one, but first, I wanna look at the uh, individual Rangers and figures that they all come with, uh, which we've briefly seen, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but, I've already shown you the Red Ranger that comes with the T-Rex, so just briefly, again, there's the Red Ranger, right? So all of these, each of the individual runs come with their own Rangers. Here's the Blue Ranger. Articulation-wise, the arms rotate, and then the legs can move forward and down individually. So there's the Blue Ranger. 
Here's the black ranger that comes with the mastodon. Yellow ranger with the saber tooth tiger. And pink ranger with the pterodactyl. So they all look pretty cool. Um, you know, each have their unique helmets and everything. So pretty neat for these little figures. If you have the, uh, the, the, what is it called? The motion activated, this little Megazord right here, the whole one piece that doesn't transform, that comes with these five and it's the exact same ones that it comes with. So if you already have that, then you already have these. But also we have the putty patroller right here. So here's the putty. Now, Granted, I don't know if this is supposed to be in scale with the other mini little figures, because if it is, the putties are gonna be massive compared to the Rangers, and that's really interesting. So let's take a quick little look at the putty itself, because this is really our first look at the putty. Looks really cool, I, I dig it. So the arms rotate around, and that's about it. The legs don't move. So definitely much more formidable than your typical putties, but you got that gray, uh, gray clay kind of look to it, you know. So it's still very much like a putty, but much more monstrous and everything, and I think that's really cool, so I dig that. So anyways, that's that. Now, let's get to the Zords. I'm not gonna focus on the T-Rex because I've already done a review of it. So you can go check out my review. Uh, just super quick summary. It's got missiles firing. It's, time for battle. it's got sounds and all that good stuff. So let's move the T-Rex out the way. We'll bring it back when it comes time to actually do some transformations. So now let's focus on each of the individual Zords. So first up, let's take a look at the Triceratops. Let me actually move these other ones out the way. That way we're just we have all the space that we need for each individual sword. So, here is the Triceratops right here. Um, as you can see, so all of these Zords have a uh, very interesting design. So obviously inspired by dinosaurs, just like the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. However, a lot more alien-esque, right? So they definitely stick with that alien theme that you see across the Ranger suits the Zords, the weapons, everything about it. So very interesting, to the point that they even gave extra legs to the Triceratops. So instead of four legs, hey, you know what? Let's give them six legs, why not? So very odd, but uh, that's what they did. They gave them extra legs. So uh, really nice blue, nice solid blue. Um, now quality-wise, you know, it feels more cheap than your typical Megazord figure. Uh, that, that's across all the Zords, I wanna say that. They all feel like they're geared towards a younger audience. Now, I don't have any of the Imagine X toys, but I feel like this is almost, it's kind of in between the Imagine X and your typical Zords. Like in terms of the, the feel of them, they just feel a lot more cheap. Uh, they are also a lot more simple in terms of like transformations and things like that. These are not Zord Builder compatible, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, so, you know, the size is definitely bigger and, and very interesting designs, but uh, the downside is, you know, the quality just feels more cheap. Uh, and considering you're paying $20 for each Zord, that's, that's actually kind of a high price, I would say. But let's uh, get to the features here. So each of the Zords can have the Ranger sit inside their cockpit. So you can open that up and you can place the Blue Ranger inside like so. So he's piloting the Triceratops. So that's pretty cool. Definitely a, uh, a neat little uh, a feature, you know, of, of all the Zords. So Blue Ranger can go inside there. Okay, then the other little gimmick is the Triceratops can fire missiles. So the tail just kind of lifts up and that becomes a cannon. And it comes with two missiles right here, pretty standard. And this just kind of clicks in like that. Now there's no button or anything, you just push the tip of it and then it fires the missile like so. Not very far, it really goes and depends on the force that you put into it. So if you do it really hard, it still doesn't go too far, you know, but uh, that's what it does, so. Yay, missile firing action. Eh, it's kind of lame. So for $20, that's all you get. You get a little Blue Ranger that can sit inside and it shoots those missiles. That's It's kind of a high price, I would say. I You know, I like having all five Zords and having them combine, but individually, they're all pretty expensive for what they are, uh, and especially the quality and everything, so that's a little disappointing. Uh, but that's the Triceratops, so let's set this thing aside and move on to the Mastodon right here, which gets even more alien-esque. This one has eight legs for some reason. Don't ask me why again, I have no clue. Um, but uh, yeah, it has eight legs. <laughs> um, 
you know, but it's got somewhat of a mastodon looking, you know, face right here with the, the trunk and tusks and everything, I guess. Um, that's really the only thing about it that makes it look like a mastodon, kind of. Um, so they really took some liberties with these designs here uh, in terms of what, uh, what it is. So based on the mastodon, but very much alien-like in nature. Now, just like the other Zords, the ranger can sit inside the, the cockpit right there. So he just kind of slides right in there. And there you can see the black ranger. He can really blends in, but uh, there he is right there. And just fits in just like that. So that's pretty neat. I do like having the mini little rangers in scale with the Zords like that. Although actually they're probably not in scale with the Zords. They're probably much bigger than they normally, because the Zords are going to be proportionally much larger than the Rangers. But even still, it's nice to have many little Ranger figures to go with the Zords. I do like that. Uh, so this Zords little gimmick, I guess you could say, is this little catapult thing. It looks like a spider web, but it just sits right on here. And then you just flick this forward, and it does that. So, yay. <laughs> so, you know, if you imagine, like, here's the putty right here. I don't really know how you're going to aim at all, but you can try and flick this forward. Oh, wow. Hey, that worked out. <laughs> so that's pretty neat. I actually like this better than the missile firing thing because it goes farther. Um, so this doesn't click into place. The, the web thing just kind of sits on top right here. Um, and then you just basically aim and fire just like that. So eh, kind of neat, I guess. You know, it is what it is. Uh, they had to add some sort of little gimmick there. So that is the Mastodon. Again, overpriced $20 for what it is, but um, it's a piece of the entire Megasword. All right, now moving on to the Sabertooth Tiger right here. Now this one looks very interesting. I do dig the design on this. So I'm going to take off this little cannon for a second and just focus on this little Zord right here. So you obviously have little fangs right here, so you can definitely get a, get a better sense of this being a saber tooth tiger, but it still has like extra cannons and and these like alien esque you know designs on it and everything. So definitely very interesting looking, um, but at least it looks a little bit more like it's you know what it's based on. Uh, so there is that the saber tooth tiger. Um, I do like the size of these again, pretty cool. Now, uh, in terms of the cockpit, it would have been nice to have the cockpit right on the, the, the head right there, just like it is in the, the Zord poster that they've shown. But in this case, the Yellow Ranger's cockpit is in the back right here. So she just kind of just sits in like so. So you can just kind of see her sitting in there. So that's where that is. So I guess they just couldn't fit it in the head right there. They didn't want to make that too big. So they just put it in the back right there. So you still can, you know, put the Ranger inside the Zord, but just in a different spot. Now the gimmick that this one little this this sword has is this massive cannon right here, and essentially you just push the button, and it does that. Doesn't fire anything, but looks kind of neat, I guess. So this does rotate all the way around, so you can, you know, pose it however you want. But uh, pretty cool. Unfortunately, with a lot of these swords, like you can't move the legs forward and back. This one, the legs kind of move out, and then this piece just can pop off, you know, that sort of thing, but so they don't really move around. So in terms of posing, you're kind of limited at what you can do. This is pretty much it for, for what you're really going to be able to pose it like. So anyways, that is the Sabertooth Tiger. So moving on, last but not least, we have the Pterodactyl right here. And this one is pretty massive in terms of the, uh, the width of it, as you can see. Definitely has a, a huge wingspan. Uh, now this one looks pretty cool. I do dig the design of it because they really turn the pterodactyl in kind of this like little jet looking thing and it looks like a pretty sweet fighter jet or something. Uh, but you can see like the little claws, the feet down there. You know, you can definitely see obviously how it looks like a pterodactyl, but then into this cool little fighter jet of sorts. So that's pretty neat. I do dig this design definitely, but as a toy, it is pretty basic. I mean, just look at it. It's just standard, just gray. A little bit of pink here and here and here, a little bit of blue there, and that's it. Like 20 bucks, and this is what you get. Like, just feels and looks cheap. Uh, so that's a disappointment there. But uh, the Ranger's cockpit on here is you just you actually lift this part forward, and then you can put the Pink Ranger 
inside like so. Um, so that actually looks kind of neat with the, the pink ranger kind of sitting there, you know, and then you can close it like so. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now this one has kind of a, a lame gimmick, but you know, let's bring in this. It came with the putty because essentially the gimmick for um, this sword is when you pull this tab back here, you're, you're like opening the claws and you essentially, it's saying like, oh, flying in. And then you open the claws and then just grab the putty like so. That's, that's really the gimmick is you can just grab the putty. Yeah, you have to stand them up. And then you just swoop right in. <laughs> you get the idea, right? So basically, swoop right in, grab it. Yay, you've captured the putty. It's it's 20 bucks for this thing. Like that that's what kills me is the the cost. And I'm sure a lot of that cost goes into the size of it, but it's still disappointing for kids that may, you know, want it and the parents buy it for them. They're going to be disappointed if, you know, they they can't afford all the swords. They're going to be stuck with these things by themselves. You know, so individually they're kind of disappointing. When you put it all together, you know, it's kind of interesting. So, let's do that right now. So, I have to kind of move the camera back <laughs> quite a bit because we need some space. This thing is going to be massive. So, I'm going to start with the T-Rex. I've already shown you the transformation in my review of the T-Rex sword. So, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm just going to kind of jump right to it. Let me move the camera a little bit so I can fit myself in here and just, just break it apart, basically. Just take apart all the pieces. And the one thing that kills me, so these are not Zord Builder ports, but these joints, some of them are really difficult to pull apart. And that's, like, for kids, I can't imagine how, like, frustrating that can be for some of them. Because some of these are really difficult. You have to put in a bit of effort. And, like, you know, it should be easy to transform these Zords. You don't want to, like, hurt somebody and have something go flying. So anyways, we got all these pieces here, right? So, Megazord head goes up top, the legs flip around and become the arms. Again, I've shown this off in my T-Rex Battlesword review. This joint in particular I've had a lot of issues with. There we go. And then this other one flips forward like so. All right, so that's where I left off in my T-Rex Battlesword review. Um, that's what we have right here. And so all these other pieces we're just going to put to the side for now. Actually, I take that back. One other piece is the T-Rex head is going to go in the back here. Like so. All right. So now we're left with that upper piece of the Megazord. So what's next? Next up is Sabertooth Tiger. And we are going to pop off the cannon and move that away. This is a very easy transformation. All you got to do is flip the, these legs to the side, and then this piece just flips all the way down, and you're done. That's it. Very easy transformation. These legs don't move or anything just like that. And what you're actually going to do is you're going to take the top half and just sit it in right here. This does not click into place anywhere. It just sits just like that. Now what you're going to do is you're actually going to take the, the peg right here and put it in the hole right here. So on the two sides, is where it's actually going to clip into place. And it doesn't click, it just kind of fits right in. These two pieces are what hold it together. There's nothing in the middle that holds it together, just these two side pieces. Okay, so we'll move that to the back for now. Now, let's bring in the Triceratops. So, to transform this, you're gonna pop off the head, and then you're going to pull this piece forward and pop off the bottom piece right here. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to pop off the legs, and when you pop off these legs, um, they're going to go on the opposite side on the top here, just like that. So I pop off these legs, go on the opposite side, just like that. Okay, now you're left with these legs right here. Uh, oh, by the way, the tail folds up. These legs, the instructions show it two different ways, kind of, or at least the, the image on the box shows them flipped over and stuff, but then one of the other pieces of the instructions shows these legs just down sideways like that as like extra support. So that's how I transform it. I just turn these down to the side just like that. OK, 
Okay, then you have this piece, which is gonna go all the way up top in the holes right there. And you're gonna take the Triceratops head and it's gonna go down at the bottom. So you're left with that leg right here, as you can see. So that's the leg of the Megazord. Where's the other leg? Well, we have the Mastodon right here. So you're actually gonna pop off the catapult and then essentially the rest of it is the same. So you're gonna pop off the head, okay. Um, take off these legs, flip this forward, take this piece off. These pieces just kind of fold down like so. Then you're gonna take the opposite side of the legs and attach them on like so. Same with here. Okay, then you're gonna take this piece, attaches in just like that. And then actually the extra step before I put the Mastodon head is on the back, you're gonna fit in the catapult basically. So it's just gonna kind of sit in right here. Just pegs at the top. Now this piece just kind of free hangs right there, but it's gonna be like that. And then the Mastodon attaches on like so. And there you have the other leg of the Megazord. Okay, so we have those pieces. Now, before we start putting it all together, I'm gonna grab the pterodactyl, and you're actually gonna take off the two wing pieces. So we'll set aside the middle piece, and we have these two pieces. Then, from the T-Rex, we have these two pieces. Now, there's two ways you can combine it. You can essentially take these uh, cannons like this and when you attach it onto the back of the Megazord these are like shoulder cannons or the instructions show it um, a different way which is uh, if you flip the the wings over you can just kind of stick this in the peg back here like so okay so you just kind of do it with the one that the wings kind of line up like that um, so I'm just gonna do it that way for now like so, all right? So there you have all the pieces. So now, let's try and combine this thing. If I can move the camera back enough to really show you. All right, let's see how this goes. This is going to be a bit of a challenge here, but, but I'm going to attempt this. If I can just make enough room for myself. So the way that the legs go is you have these little attachments here this right here, and it just kind of just slides in. It doesn't click into place, it just slides in like that, okay? Same with the Macedon, just kind of slides in like that. The Macedon one is pretty tight for me, but the Triceratops joint is kind of loose. So, you, you know, your mileage may vary with that, so just keep that in mind. Then, all the way at the top here, I'm gonna turn this around. Let me see if I can put the camera up a little bit. No, that's, that's as far as it's gonna go. Um, you have this little peg right here, which is gonna go into this hole right here, basically. So I'll just kinda attach it in like so. And then on the other side as well, this is really difficult to do in front of the camera. Yeah, just kind of pegs in. Oh, now this piece kind of came off. So you have to be very careful because it's very easy for like, you connect one piece and then another piece just kind of comes off. There we go, just peg those in. And there we have, if I can fit this into the camera frame, we have the Megazord from the movie. Um, this thing is massive, as you can see. Uh, it is huge. So, let me just kind of zoom in real quick and you can really get a sense of all the pieces. So the Triceratops form the wings along with pieces of the T-Rex sword. Um, so you have a little bit of pink and stuff there and red. The T-Rex forms the torso, um, or like the upper chest piece rather. Sabertooth Tiger in the middle there. 
And then the two legs are the Mastodon and Triceratops. So this thing is huge. Um, obviously, there's some massive differences between this and the original Mighty Morphin Megazord. Uh, for one, the legs on the Mighty Morphin Megazord have the Saber 2 Tiger and Triceratops. In this case, it's the Mastodon and Triceratops. So the transformation is different, the look is different, um, but uh, here it is. Now, for comparison's sake, I'm going to bring in this version of the Megazord right here. So I've done a review of this. This is the one that does not transform. It's all one piece. And you can see some similarities, obviously, in the design because it's the same Megazord, but also some differences. Uh, first of all, let me open up the wings here for a little bit more of an accurate comparison. So, similarities and differences. Uh, one, obviously, the overall design, the helmet shape, the chest piece, you know, all that stuff is similar. But you'll notice... Here you have the Triceratops and Mastodon, blue and black. Down here it has both blue, um, so there's that. It does have the saber shoot Tiger in the middle, so that's interesting. And yeah, it, it, so there's some similarities, but also... How, which, like, is this one? I'm assuming the, the bigger one is going to be more accurate to the movie. We don't know for sure, but that's my assumption. Um, but it's very interesting to see the two combined and next to each other, just for comparison's sake, just to see kind of how they stack up to each other. So that is certainly very interesting. Uh, let's move this guy out the way, and I'm going to bring in the Ninja Steel Megazord, which is kind of your standard scale for your usual Megazord. So this is usually what kids get when they buy a Megazord. And then obviously, as you can see, size-wise, it's huge. You know, if I bring in the Rumble Tusk Megazord, stack it on top, it's still not as tall as this other Megazord. So, Siri is looking for a Megazord on, uh, on my phone. Sorry, Siri, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> um, but uh, this thing is just huge, as you can see. So I want to do that size comparison just to really give you that sense of scale for this, this Megazord. So this thing is massive. All right, so I wanted to hop in front of the camera and show you <laughs> this Megazord up close because I'm not done with this yet, but it was really hard to kind of show it to you in detail With the way I had it set up before because it's just massive So uh, there is another thing that you can do with it Which is you can take this piece of the pterodactyl and it can actually fit in almost as a I don't even know is this a blaster a sword? I don't know you can even take the t-rex tail and use that as a sword of sorts so you have that option or, just like the other version of the Megazord that doesn't transform, it had these cannons on the side, so you can do just that. So I can take the Saber 2 Tiger cannon and attach it to the side right here, and then this cannon that came with the T-Rex and attach it to the side right here. Now because this version of the Megazord has these cannons and so does the non-transformable interactive Megazord, I'm assuming in the movie it'll probably have the same cannons just because it seems to have it across multiple toys, but I could be wrong. I don't know. But here it is. As you can see, this thing is huge. I mean, like, look at this thing. This is massive. Um, pros and cons, you know, it, I find it a little difficult to stand on its own sometimes. So if I stand this up, it's a little back heavy. So you kind of have to really have the arms forward a little bit, and then it sort of balances on its own. So that's kind of the one little thing to keep in mind. Uh, it is a little back heavy. Um, also, little pieces of it can kind of come undone. The Triceratops one is not super strong. Uh, so that just came off. There's uh, some leg. Oh, the leg of the Mastodon just popped off. So there are certain pieces that are not super sturdy. So keep that in mind when you have this transformation that it's, it's not, it can easily kind of come undone. Also, I mean, I love that it's big, but I have no idea like where, like where to put this. Like, it's huge. Um, but it, so, okay, let me sum things up basically because I've gone on quite quite long enough. Um, overall, the design is different. Definitely different than what you're used to. Whether you like the design or not, that's probably the main thing to think about first if you're trying to decide if you should buy this. Personally, I like it. It's different. It definitely is different. But I think it looks cool overall. It's a really interesting design. 
really cool robotic looking, alien looking, still dinosaur looking when you, you know, have the individual dinosaurs to some extent. So it kind of looks really interesting. I like it. Now, cost wise, the quality, transformation wise, this is where it's a little mixed. If you're just planning on buying individual Zords, if you can't afford the whole package, honestly, I probably wouldn't even buy them at all then because the individual Zords are overpriced and they feel and look cheap. 20 bucks for each of the Zords and 35 for the T-Rex, it's a lot for what you usually get, especially considering 35 for the T-Rex, you can probably get a whole Megazord for that cost. Like, it's pretty overpriced. But if you can afford the whole set, I think having this full combined version is worth it. It does feel kind of, you know, somewhat cheap compared to your usual Megazord style. Um, and uh, quality wise, you know, like it, it's, it feels different. It doesn't feel as, as high quality. Uh, feels, you know, like it's meant to be a little more like sturdy, you know, for kids. Whereas like if I were to throw around one of the other Megazords, it'd probably break more easily than this. So they really focus more on the size. That's really the biggest thing that they seem to have focused on with this Megazord. And in that sense, I think it looks really cool. It's pretty epic and I dig it. But I'm hoping down the line, they haven't announced it yet, but I'm hoping they're gonna release a movie Megazord in the same scale, Zord Builder compatible as all the other stuff. Honestly, I kind of doubt it though. Um, so I wouldn't hold your breath, but if they do, that would be amazing. But as of now, this is probably the best way to get it. I have pieces that keep falling off of this Mastodon. Oh, there goes the upper chest piece. You see what I mean? How easily this thing falls apart. Oh man, all right, let me fix this. So overall, I like it. I think it's pretty cool, but it does have its downside. So keep that in mind when you're buying it. It's not a perfect toy. It has its issues, um, but if you can afford it, overall, I think this is a really cool set that they have released for the movie. And I am excited about the movie. I cannot wait to see this thing in action in the movie. It's gonna be epic. So anyways, that is my review of all the individual battle zords and the combined megazord right here hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did please give this video a thumbs up and share it as well and hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already because i got lots more power rangers reviews on the way thank you so much for watching and i will see you later did you ever imagine when the announcer making a power rangers movie that they would take this guy and turn it into this like this is just insane the the difference uh, in, in what you're seeing here. I, I, in so many ways, uh, they really don't look all that similar. They really took a lot of liberty, liberties with the design. Uh, they're both pretty cool. I, I, I dig it. Uh, obviously, I love this one for, for many reasons, but this one is still pretty neat, and, and you can see the color-wise how they've rearranged certain things. The Triceratops is in the same spot. Sabertooth Tiger has moved around. You know, this one has wings and stuff. So they definitely took some liberties with the design. It's definitely different. But uh, it's still very interesting, and I still dig it, and I can't wait to see this on the big screen. But I uh, just wanted to kind of show you that little comparison, just to see how drastically different this, this really is. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed my review. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thank you so much, and I will see you later.